Hey, coming at you from the farm today with kind of an interesting topic. So, um, got some friends and uh, they thought it'd be really cool if they sent me some graphics for my guns. One for the scope, one for the rifle. They said, this is awesome. It looks as good as Cerakoting. It's easy to put on. So, I took one of my plastic stock guns, if you want to call it that, and thought, well, maybe I'll put it on this one. I'm not too sure because I kind of like the feel of the checkering. I like the way this stock is. It's kind of, you know, beater proof in this form. But I thought, you know, no matter what, I'll try it on the scope. Let's see what goes. And I'm not going to take my scope off um, because after watching the video, which is the only instructions you get with it, is this video here on, on YouTube, um, I realized that I, I probably could at least try it on the gun once because taking it off makes a whole new reset and I didn't really wish to do that. So, you know, it was a little bit of trial and error. Um, obviously, they tell you you can use a blow dryer or a heat gun. They give you this nice little product to make it stick more. You will crack the tube and you wipe it all over everything and, you know, just try to make it on. And, you know, again, the, the principle behind these gun skins is really simple. If you're going out goose hunting in the middle of a white winter, you wouldn't want, you know, your black gun. If you're going out duck hunting and you're in the camo, you know, you wouldn't want your silver barrel of your shotgun, you know, out there, you know, flashing the birds against the sun. So that's kind of the principle behind it, right? You, you cover everything up. You can cover the barrel, you can cover the scope, you can cover the trigger guard, you can cover the stock, you can make everything look the way, the way you want it, right? And then it, it becomes camouflaged into the scenery. Yeah, that, that's the way it's supposed to work. But you know, having a 30 millimeter tube with a fairly good angle on this thing, I have my doubts right off the bat as I try to kind of pre-fit things and see, you know, they say, hey, just stick it on, you know, use the heat gun, flatten it out, wrap it around, you know, that kind of thing. And again, if, if you were just doing this for like a one-time lifetime hunt, or maybe you got a beater shotgun that you're just going to put this stuff on that you don't care about because you know what, you're sticking the butt stock in the water and it's laying in the bottom of the canoe getting all scratched up and that's all you want to do. I, you know, I totally, I totally get it. But you know, I spent uh, over an hour at this. I put it on several times. You know, the claim is, by the way, you can peel this stuff off and, and put it back on. I would agree with that claim within reason you can. If you get it too stretched, though, it, it makes it extremely difficult to get back on. The The amount of angle, the amount of things that you got to go around that's round, obviously makes it more difficult. Um, I'm only going to show you guys how I did on the scope. Um, because by the time I got done with the forearm and the scope, I never even got to the barrel. Um and the reason is, is because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I work hard. I want things to work the way they say they work. And, you know, little tiny crinkles I could probably deal with. But unless you know how to make the right relief cuts in this, you get some big ones. It kind of sucks. The other problem is, is anywhere you make the relief cut to make this thing lay down properly, you know, as you either go over that or overlap, you have another seam. So I ended up with a bunch of seams that I didn't like especially down towards the grip of, of the rifle. I, I don't want it down there. I don't want to feel a line in the middle of my fingers as I'm gripping that rifle. I don't want to reach out to the forearm and feel a line right underneath dead center of the forearm. The other thing is, is that as you come up on the lip of the gun, you know, you're just supposed to lay it on that little thin edge of the lip of the stock. Good luck, folks. Um, you can get it in there, but then you got to do fine trimming. And if you ain't careful, you're, you're going to touch your wood or your plastic or your stock. Obviously for the butt stock, you can take that off and then trim that perfectly smooth at the butt. And that's great, but it's, it's still not the easiest to do. It, it really isn't folks. So I, I had my level of frustration. I took things off several times, tried to getting them to work, coming back at it in different methods. Um, you know, again, I watched the video three times. I went and watched a competitor's video just to see if I could learn some of their techniques. Again, this, this idea of it being a, a fairly straightforward process, sure. Um, maybe if you have a non-checkered stock on a shotgun and a non-checkered foregrip on a stock, a shotgun, and you don't mind that you're going to have a few either wrinkles or creases or seams right where you might be hand gripping. 
maybe then it's fine. It's also probably fine for that person that says, look, I've got this lifetime goose hunt up in North Dakota, and I want to be, you know, more white than anything, and my gun is absolutely black. This would be a way to temporarily make that work for you. You could make the whole gun look pretty much white so that those geese aren't going to see that thing. And again, you could do this for a duck blind too, right? You could go into that duck blind situation with that full camo on and and make it work that way. I, I did not find it practical though for me. I, I found this to be, you know, if I had to pay the money, which I'm told that this thing costs about 50 bucks to get, I, I thought it would kind of be a waste. But again, now comparing that to serial coating and, and, and getting the gun or the stock, you know, custom sprayed or, you know, made in a certain color or something, that would be a totally different game plan for me. And I can totally understand that for people. So if you want to compare serial coating prices or custom spraying of a stock or, you know, custom varnishing of a stock compared to this, this is dirt cheap. And I'm not going to argue that, folks, but it also looks dirt cheap. I mean, unless you're a really good artist and you really understand how to wrap vinyl and you work on cars, you work on boats. And by the way, I've, I've done some 4x4 decals on my pickup truck. I've done some decals on my Luma trailer. I've done decals on um, my decals on the uh, John Deere um, balers. I've done new decals on farmalls. You know, when you're doing a vinyl decal like that, and it's on a flat metal surface where you can start smooth and work your way up or or kind of squeegee it on, it works fine. But these surfaces aren't smooth. They are checkered. They are rounded. They have seams. You'll have a seam at the top of your stock and the bottom of your stock. You'll have a seam at the bottom of your fore stock if you're not careful. I, I just, no, no, nah, not for me. So I did finish this. I put it all on just so I could see. Um, again, I'm, I'm not going to bore you with, you know, three hours of video as I did the, the whole stock too, because this is almost done here and what I'm doing on the, on the rifle scope. But I am going to tell you that, yeah, if you stood back, it looked cool. But if you felt it, you'd see my little imperfections and things. And I didn't think that was worth it. And again, you would have to take, for the rifle part, you'd have to take the scope off, which means resetting your scope. And I just don't know if that's something you want to do or not. To me, that's a big pain in the butt when you've gone through all the work to get that scope on right. So not really worth it for me, folks. Um, this is a cosmetic job, which I'm not real happy about. Um, I'm going to take this back off, and I'm not going to keep it on. I appreciate people sending it to me. They wanted me to try it out. They they meant goodwill to me and trying to make it look cool and make it look fun. And I think that was very, very, very nice of them. And I'm I'm extremely happy that people think of me that way and they care about me enough to give me a gift like this. But this isn't for me, folks. So I'm going to part ways with this. I'm going to just stay with the black and keep it the way it needs to be. I hope you can understand how I feel about it. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, or follow us on the different channels that we're on. Thank you.